Hi guys, welcome to a new video by New Era Tourism. Today we're talking about Sir William Haygate Edmund Colborne Rutland, MBE. Born on the 29th of September 1899 and died on the 12th of June 1980. Sir William was a South African born British entrepreneur whose name is well known on British holiday camps, um, known as Butlins, obviously. Although um, holiday camps insisted one way or the other before the first one opened in 1936, it was Butlins Butlin who turned holiday camps into a multi-million pound industry and an important aspect of British culture. So, a bit about Billy. Um, as mentioned, he was born William Haygate Edmund Colborne Butlin on the 29th of September 1899. He died at the age of 80 years old um, in Jersey. His resting place is St John in Jersey. Nationality, United Kingdom. Obviously known for holiday camps. So, born in Cape Town, South Africa, to William and Bertha Butlin. Butlin had a turbulent childhood. His parents separated before he was seven and he returned to England with his mother. He spent the next five years following his grandmother's family fair around the country to where his mother sold gingerbread exposing the young Butlin to the skills of commerce and entertainment. When he was 12, his mother emigrated to Canada, leaving um, Bill in the, this country. Once his mum was settled in Toronto, his mum wanted Bill to follow him over there. Um, Bill went, but he didn't like the school, so he went and got himself a job at the department store Eaton's. Then World War One broke out. He got himself a um, job as a bugler over there, whatever a bugler is, and this was in the Canadian Army. After the war, Butler returned to England, bringing five pound with him, which was a lot of money in those days. Investing four pound of that money to hire a stall, which was a hoopla stall. Here we have the Hoopla store. Well, one like I. Sir Billy was the person who introduced Dodgems to Europe in 1928, securing the first license to sell them and installing them into Skegness when it opened in 1936, also obviously bringing them into this country. Um, as you can see, there was another place that he actually opened see from the pictures in Little Hampton Hopefully I've, had no, I've allowed enough time for you to read that. If not, then please pause it. So he's always had a um, um, commerce and entertainment background and always been interested in this kind of life. It wasn't until the late 1920s when Harry and Billy met. 
um, and that's when the commercial area of the Great British Holiday um, Camp began to take shape. Harry was a successful cafe owner in Hayling Island. He met Billy when he was on a day trip with his family to Billy's amusement park in Bognor Regis. The meeting resulted in Harry selling Billy the land needed for an amusement park in Hayling Island. With the money from the deal, Harry bought um, Northerly Farm which became the first Warner Holidays, Holiday Centre, 1931. In 1932, the two entrepreneurs joined forces, forming Butlin's Stroke Warner Holiday Services to develop a new holiday camp empire. It proved a short-lived partnership because after three years, Harry Warner continued his expansion with new holiday camps in Essex and on the Isle of Wight, while Billy Butlin persuaded his dreams of um, creating a luxury holiday camp for middle-income families to escape the strict rules of boarding houses in 1936. Billy's first holiday camp opened in Ingemarles near Skegness. And with it, the famous Butlin Chalets and the Coats were born. We will be doing more on Warner, but that will be in another video. Competition between Harry and Billy, although close friends battled to offer the best possible value for money for their guests. And in 1938, with the help of Billy's active lobbying, the Holiday with Pay Act was passed, which gave workers the right to one week's paid holiday per year. Quick to capitalise on this new entitlement, Butlin's famous advertise, advertising read, Holidays with Paid Holidays um, with Play, a week's holiday for a week's pay. The new popular holiday camp concept had opened to the masses. The Great British Seaside Holiday had entered a new era of entertainment, dining halls, theatres, bars and guaranteed fun come rain or shine. In 1939 it was the war, the Second World War. Um, within days of the declaration of the war, Skagness had become a requisition for military use as a naval training camp known as HMS Royal Arthur. The camp's high volume um, accommodation and open spaces led to a shrewd bargain with the government. Billy was able to finish his um, half-built camp in Farley and built two new military camps in Pfeli and Air on a favourable post-war buyback arrangement. Warner now had four holiday camps, but as um, as with Butlins, many were used in the armed forces and Dover Court often refused to Jewish children and families fleeing from Germany. In 1945, the camps were returned back to Warren and Butlins after some hurried construction work. The, resort, the resorts um, reopened to the public just six weeks after the end of the war. Butlins' iconic entertainment expanded with Gaty Theatres, Regency and Prince's Ballroom. On the, um, 1st March 1964, the Leisure Caravans Park business was set up by the Old Boys. Their first park was the Alberta in Kent, which is now owned by Park Holidays. Their vision was to create beautiful holiday parks where people could enjoy holiday home ownership. In the 1950s, Butlin's Bahamas opened its doors alongside many British-based hotels, including the Grand Hotel in Scarborough, 
Ocean Hotel in Saltdean, Brooklyn's Metropole Hotel in Blackpool. There's been many changes to the hotels during the years. I wonder what the ho what Billy Butlin would think of the hotels today that once was. The hotels that stand at Bognor Regis today are totally different from the hotels that he once owned. Here he is stood outside the one at Scarborough. In 1963, the Queen and Prince Philip paid a visit to Butlins at Pavelli. Following the Duke's stay there during World War II. 1964, Sir William Billy Butlin receives a knighthood from the Queen. Billy Butlin recalls his experiences of This Is Your Life in his autobiography, The Billy Butlin Story. When I was at least free to marry Nora, the woman who had lived with me as my wife for 20 years, it seemed a happy ending to the long years of frustration. We had been unable to marry because my wife Dolly, who was Nora's sister, refused to give me a divorce, though I asked her many times. But in 1958, Dolly um, dies, and though I was not, it wished I were well, not the way I wished it not been, and this unfortunate situation was resolved. In preceding years, my um, relations with Nora had become very tense. To my utter despair, she, like my sister, had begun to drink heavily. Like her sister had begun to drink heavily. She had tried to hide it. We had begun to quarrel frequently and been on the point of separating several times. Free to marry, we talked it over again. Noah promised to stop drinking. And for the sake of our three children, Bobby, Cherry and Sandra, we decided to make a fresh start in marriage. All wedding days are memorable and mine and Nora's proved to be even more memorable than I could possibly have imagined. For as we left Caxton Hall, I was handed a message saying that an emergency meeting of the crew committee of the Variety Club of Great Britain was being held earlier that meeting. What a time to hold a meeting on my wedding day, I thought, but we were not going to go away on honeymoon. And as uh, 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 that year I was Chief Barker, President and hand, Head Fundraiser of the club, I felt it was important I should attend. So while Nora went home to write thank you letters, I returned to the office and later attended the Variety Club meeting, which was being held in the offices of Associated with, um, British Pictures. Everybody was sorry that my wedding day had been interrupted, but they said, never mind, it gives us a chance to have a ce um, celebrity um, drink together before the the second marriage only lasted a few months, as Billy Butlin had already fallen in love with Sheila, um, Abuina Divine. This time it was Nora who refused to grant him a divorce. In 1975, with divorce laws having changed, Billy Butlin was able to divorce Nora and marry Sheila, with whom he remained until his death. Sir Billy has several children from his three marriages. Sheila, Robert, um, Charlie, Sandra, William Jr, Jackie. And that's it, I think. Unless I've missed any out. Perhaps you could tell me if I've missed any out. 
So Billy set the bar for the red coat uniform. Um, they had to be dressed in a certain way, looking completely professional at all times. There have been different events over the years. Here's an event for a Brooklyn's Festival in 1951, held at the Royal Albert Hall. Other events have included the Firely Dance Festival and Congress competitions, which you can see the pictures for above. You can also see the Beaver Club, the children, and obviously there's always, it's fun always um, at Butlins. There have been the Butlins Second Week badges given out and the Guest Butlins Committee. There is actually a story about this badge that I would like to share with you all um, because I actually buy badges for my collection. So here we go. Thanks for buying the Butlins Guest Committee badge. These are rarer than any other Butlins badges as they were only given to Butlins Guest Committee members. Basically, the Guest Committee was a group of holiday makers selected at the start of the week's holiday who were then judged all the com competitions during the week such as the Nobly Knee competition, Bonnie Baby or Glamorous Grandma etc. I met my wife Leslie when we were both red coats at Bifelli back in 1982 and when she was in charge of the guest committee hence this was her own badge from that year. We both carried on in the inter entertainment industry and actually returned to all the remaining Butlin camps as a visiting cabaret act for many years during the 1990s and 2000. I don't know if you've heard of Bob Wooding, but this is his wife's badge. I would like to say thank you to Bob for sharing that story with me. In 1965, the first commercial monorail arrived at Butlin Skagness, along with miniature railways and innovative chairlifts well ahead of their time. Later, they um, came available at Minehead and other holiday camps, arriving at Minehead in 1967. In 1966, the Butlins Top of the Tower restaurant opened and that was the Top of the Post Office Tower in central London and that was open through to 1980. And of course the photo you can see here is the one of Sir Billy Butlin being busy on the phone as he would normally be, um, especially going on to places. Here is a photo of some old adverts, advertising holidays. And this is a plate that was done to celebrate the Diamond Jubilee. In 1968, Billy Butlin, of course, retired and his son Bobby took over uh, the winning of the company. In Sir Billy's working life, he received many accolades, including an MBE in 1945 for his services during the war, and a knighthood in 1964 for his services to the church. In 1973, he was awarded for the Variety Clubs an award and named an international extraordinaire. During that time, he formed the Butlins Charity Trust, donating large sums of money to charities, including world-famed charity hospital, Great Ormond Street. So, the question I want to ask today, was Sir Billy Butlin a um, pioneer? Was he somebody that you would think, wow, an absolutely extraordinary person? If you could comment, please, in the comments, I would appreciate it. 
What made him more outstanding to everybody else? Did he have a plan of how he wanted his life to go? Did he get into his head when he was younger what he wanted to do? I think it's worth thinking about. I'd like to know what you think. I know that the buttoning name still carries on today, but I'm doing right up until when Sir Billy Butlin retires. Um, I know when his son took over, um, he was in charge for four years, and then he sold it to the rank organisation for £43 million. Pounds. That was in 1972. Then in 1980, Sir Billy Butlin passed away. His burial place is in Jersey. It's got a huge double bed, apparently. Um, but the story carrying on from rank and born leisure and everything, I will do this in another video. I uh, just really wanted to do about the Sir Billy Butlin times in this video. I just want to show you a few photos. So here's um, Billy Bear. And then here's a few photos of some red coats. Going back in time. And then obviously the competitions. some of the stuff together and then the plaque that is outside at Firely for Sir Billy Butlin. I'm going to be doing a few videos um, obviously covering Sir Billy Butlin today I'm going to be doing Bourne Leisure, um, Pontins, Warner, Haven um, so yeah please enjoy them because I, I will enjoy making them Okay, bye for now. Please remember to subscri um, subscribe and like. Um, definitely subscribe to me. Thank you. Goodbye.